Hello, my name is Nancy Strickland and in the next seven minutes I'm going to show you how to code for the camera feature in your Windows Phone 7 Silverlight applications. The hardware specifications for Windows Phone 7 require at least a 5 megapixel camera with a flash. That means that you as a developer can write applications knowing that the camera will always be available to you. And this video will give you a quick preview of how easy it is to do that. But first of all, I need to explain what launchers and choosers are. The architecture and the application model of Windows Phone 7 isolates applications completely. One application can't access files or functions or data from another. So then how can the app you write use the camera application to get that functionality? That's where launchers and choosers come in. They're APIs to run a built-in application like the camera or email or phone calling or others. The difference between them is that a launcher doesn't return any data to the calling application, but a chooser does. The basics of using either a launcher or a chooser are simple. You first create an instance of the class that you want to use, and you set any required properties. Then if you're using a chooser, you'll need to assign a delegate for the completed event so that you can retrieve the data that it generates. And you'll need to implement the event handler for the completed event. The event args for all choosers events have an error property, which holds an exception if one was thrown, and a task result that shows whether the task was completed or canceled, and then the return data associated with that particular chooser. And finally, you call the show method of either the launcher or the chooser, and that invokes the launcher or the chooser. We'll see this in code in just a minute, but first I want to explain the Windows Phone 7 task model. When a launcher or a chooser starts, the calling application is completely terminated. It's not running in the background, it's actually closed, but its state is saved. That's called tombstoning. After the task completes, your application gets reactivated, meaning that a whole brand new instance of the app is created, and the activated event is raised, which restores the state of your application. That makes it look to users like they're returning to the existing application instead of to a new instance. Okay, now we're ready for the demo. For the beta release of the Windows Phone Developer Tools, the beta version of the emulator for Visual Studio 2010 doesn't have a real camera function, but there is kind of a rough emulation of it that works for a demo, and you'll be able to see how to write code that should work on the real hardware. I'll open a new project using the Silverlight template that you get by installing the developer kit for Windows Phone 7. This is all covered in the Getting Started video that's part of this series. I'm going to drag an image onto the page and a button. Clicking the button is going to activate the camera app, so I'll double click it now to create the click handler method. But before I can write the handler code, I need to do a few other things first. First I'll need some using statements. There they are using Microsoft Phone and using Microsoft Phone.tasks. Now I'm going to declare the camera chooser. The name of the class is Camera Capture Task. Then in the main page constructor I'll instantiate that task. And now I can move on to the click handler where I'll call the show method. And that'll start the camera app. Now when the camera app finishes, I need to provide code for whatever it is I want to do with the picture in my own app. So to do that, I'm going to go back into the constructor so that I can create an event handler for the completed camera event. The easiest way to do that is type in cam task, select the completed event, type the plus equals, and then press tab twice. Now, after Camera Capture Task launches the camera application, if the user completes the task of taking a photo, this completed event will be raised, and the event handler is passed a photo result object that exposes a stream that contains the image data. And now I need to write code to work with it. I'll replace this exception with code that gets the chosen photo from the event args decodes it into a writable bitmap, that's what page decoder decode JPEG does, and then sets it as the source for the image that I put on the page. Now I'm going to run it. Now 
Now it's loaded, but I'm going to click the Start button here and scroll over to the next page and start it from there. Now here's the main page. When I click this button, this screen opens. I'm going to move my mouse up here to click the shutter button, which is about here, and it'll take a simulated picture. And now I have a choice to retake it or to accept it. I'll accept. I didn't write any of this functionality, of course. This is all the built-in camera app that's running right now. Now clicking Accept fired the completed event, so that takes me back to the original page, which is a new instance of my app, and you can see that the picture that was returned from the camera is now in my image. Even though this isn't working fully in the beta, it will of course in the hardware, you can see from the preview that it's going to be very easy to work with the camera on Windows Phone 7. Just a few simple lines of code. At this link you can download sample code for a more complex application that uses the camera and also edits photos. So there's a quick 7 minute look at the camera on Windows Phone 7. I'll put a copy of the demo code up on my blog so you can download it and as I post new videos I announce it on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.